The company that makes M&Ms claims the following distribution in each bag, okay? 13% brown, 14% yellow, 20% orange, 16% green, 24% blue, and 13% red. Is this true? Well, we're going to figure it out. So we've gone through our bag, we've categorized our colors, um, and here it is. So when you do a hypothesis test with uh, chi-squared, your hypothesis is very similar every single time. Wordy, yes, but similar and doable. Okay, so what we would say, we're interested in the color distribution, right? So we would say the claimed, the color distribution of M&Ms I should, I should say the claimed, the claimed color distribution is true. Because I don't want to write all that out. So I'm just going to say the claimed color distribution for these M&Ms is true. So the null is the equal, then what do you think the alternative would be? It's not true. It's not true. So it's definitely a not equal. So I'd say the claimed color distribution of M&Ms is not true. Write it out one time really nice and full of con context, and then you use your ditto marks to save you a moment. Okay? It's always going to be a not true in your alternative with chi-square. We don't do less times or greater than, okay? Because we're not dealing with numbers. Okay, so let's suppose that their claim is true, and if they are correct, how many would we have expected of each color to get? All right? So they tell us the percentages, right? So brown, okay, so it's 55, and they said that it was going to be, what, 13% brown? So if I take 55 and I multiply it by 0.13, for the sake of time, I'll give you these numbers. Uh, it comes out to 7.15. Yellow, I would have done 55 times 0.14. This came out to 7.7. .7. Orange is 55 times 0.2, which gives me 11. Do you see the pattern here? How we're finding these values? Okay. So green, eight point eight. Blue. Oh wait, blue is 0.24. I messed that up. I'm sorry. Green was 16%. Okay, that makes more sense. Blue would then be 13.2. And then red would be 13%, which is back to 7.15. Okay. So these are what we call our expected counts, what we would have expected to see if the claims were true. All right. Now this table down here is kind of a monster, and it's the only time you're going to have to do it by hand. Okay, but I want you to take some uh, appreciation for what the equation is going to do for us, okay, and the calculator. So the first thing we do is list out what did we observe, okay? We're just going to copy down those numbers. Brown was 4, yellow was 6, orange is 9, green is 13, 15, and 8. And the expected values are what we calculated, okay? what we just calculated. So 7.15, 7.7, 11, 8.8, 13.2, So then, now the table says, let's subtract. Observed minus expected. So, and the order matters. So 4 minus 7.15 gives me negative 3.15. Now I'm going to work across the table, so I have to do these once, because look, the next one is asking me to square that value, right? So I'm just going to, oops, not that. Ugh. Okay, squared is 9.923. And then notice what it's saying. Take the squared value and divide it by the expected. One point three eight eight. All right. So six minus seven point seven 
gives me negative 1.7. Square it, 2.89. Minus expected, divided by expected. Do that right. Oh, I got something different here. Yeah. Wait, for which one? This one? This one? Maybe I typed it in wrong. Top one, I think I did it wrong initially, but I think it's point three eight eight. Let's go with that. All right, so. 2.89. Oh, wait, that's not right. I did it wrong again. Sorry. <coughs> sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. This is why we hate doing this by hand. <laughs> Observe minus expected squared divided by expected. I did this last period too. 1.38 was right, huh? I'm sorry, I'm making mistakes. It's going to happen. I'm, I know, I know. So negatives for. So 4 divided by 11. Four point two, seventeen point six four. Two point zero zero Okay, if somebody wants to total these up for me over in this column right here, as I work out the last one. Have I got a total yet? 4.478? Thank you. Okay, so all I did was add these up. Well, that's what he did for me. He added them up and totaled it up to 4.478. So it's a hot mess to do this all by hand, right? Mm -hmm. Nobody wants to do that by hand. It's embarrassing. All right, so this is what we call our chi-squared statistic. And that's how we get there. I'm going to show you the shorthand. What kind of work do you have to show? And how do you get that number a lot faster as we go along? Now, before we get into those mechanics, though, stop and think. What value would you get for the test statistic, that's this, the total of all of them, if our sample was very close to what was expected? If our observed and expected values were really, really close, what would that do to this number down here? It'd make it really, really small, really close to zero, right? If they were identical, that chi squared would be zero, wouldn't it? Can't be zero. It can't be negative. It would just be zero. It would get smaller and smaller and smaller if they were very close. So yeah, it would be close to zero. Observed minus the expected would be close to zero. Okay, so let's think about it the other way. What would we get for our test statistic if our sample was really far? Our test statistic would, test statistic would get higher and higher and higher, right? Yes. A large number. Observed and expected values. Okay. 
would be far apart. Okay. Okay. Now, so what we notice with chi squared is you can't get a chi squared that's negative. Does that make sense to you guys? Because when we do all this subtracting and squaring, it all becomes positive. So what happens is the chi squared curve no longer, it's not a normal curve. It's not a binomial distribution. This is different. So there's a few little things that change as we go along. But right now we're just talking real general, okay? So hypothesis. The claimed distribution, make sure you put a context, is true. And then the alternative is that the claimed distribution is not true. OK? And then when we check conditions, notice these look familiar. Random, large counts, 10%. Now, large counts is a little different. Okay, the normal n p, p greater than or equal to 10, n 1 minus p greater than, that has to do with the binomial distribution, which is normal. This is no longer normal. So we do what's called expected counts. And all of our expected counts have to be at least 5. Okay, and how did we do? Well, we just did that a while ago. We just took our sample size times the percentage they gave us, just n p. All right. And then the 10% condition is still in play. It hasn't gone anywhere. Now here's the formula. It is on your charts, nothing you have to memorize. But the larger the chi-squared, the more evidence we have for the alternative hypothesis. Now as we get into our calculator doing this for us, it is going to ask us for degrees of freedom. Degrees of freedom is nothing more than the number of categories minus 1. So K is for categories. Number of categories minus 1. And to get our P value, we're not going to use a table. We're going to use, in the, te the test in your calculator is chi-squared goodness of fit. It's abbreviated GOF. In order to use that, you do have to input data in your calculator. So L1 is going to be your observed counts. L2 is going to be your expected counts. Hi. Just checking out the room. Okay, sure. Help yourself. All right. So we'll get into that in a moment. All right. Let's try this one out. Our um, question is: Are births equally likely across the days of the week? Are you, you know, are you as equally likely to be born on a Monday as a Saturday? So let's say a random sample of 150 births give the following distribution. Okay. What are you looking at? It. What do you think? Why do you think that is? Because they want to put it off so they don't have to take so they get to take off. Doctors nowadays want to schedule those C-sections on the weekdays, so they don't have to work on the weekends, right? That's been proven to be an issue nowadays. But now, do babies still come on Saturdays and Sundays? Yes, because they have a mind of their own, right? But a lot of them, C-sections, when you factor C-sections in, those get, can't, those get scheduled, right? As opposed to back in the olden days, and babies did what they wanted, right? Exactly. <laughs> okay, so let's state our hypothesis. All right. So sometimes picking up the context and the wording is a little trick. But what are we saying? Are they equally likely, right? Remember, null is the equal. So births are equally likely across the days of the week. All right, then what would the alternative be? Yeah, births are not equally likely across the days of the week. Okay. Okay, calculate the expected counts. Well, there's 150 babies in our sample, right? What's the probability they would be born on a Monday? Good. If they're equally likely, it's just one out of seven, right? Good. One out of seven. So when I do that, <clears throat> I get 21.42. Is that greater than five? Mm -hmm. Yes. So that condition is satisfied. Now, 
Calculate the value of chi squared. Well, when it, sh when it comes to showing work, here's what you need to do. You can put your little chi squared, and we're going to go back and reference this guy up here. Observe minus expected squared over expected, but we don't have to do it for everything, okay? Don't panic. So I'm going to do like Sunday. I'm going to say observed minus what was expected, 21.42 squared over expected plus, well, that's Sunday's component, right? I could do the same thing for Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Y'all don't want to write that, do you? No. So what you do, dot, 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 and then I'll go to the end of the row and do this for Saturday. Oops. Put a big old equal sign, and this is where my calculator will come into play. So, when I do it in my calculator, you're going to do stat test, and it is test number, it's way down there, you might even want to roll up. When you look at your list in the test, there's two chi-squareds, okay? There's one that just says chi-squared, and then there's one that says chi-squared goodness of it, G-O-F. That's the one we're dealing with today, and it is test number, or letter D. Yeah, we're in the letters now. <laughs> Goodness of fit, okay? One sample, one variable. That's really the, the deal here, okay? Now, it is going to ask you, where's the data? Well, we put, I already put it in my calculator, so you don't have to take time to do it. But in list one, we put the observed. In list two, we put the expected. List two, we put our expected counts. And then we can run the test. And it will ask me, okay, where is some data? List one, list two. And then it's going to ask me degrees of freedom. How many degrees of freedom will this test have? Six. Good. Seven minus one is six. Got it. All right. So when I run that, it gives me a chi-squared of 13.61. And in the same output, it's going to give me the p-value. And I get 0 0.0343. Now, if you're, if you're looking at your calculator, if you did it in your calculator, it also gives you this line that says contributions. Now, what the heck does that mean? Well, contributions has to do with which day of the week, when we subtracted, observed, and expected, had the biggest difference. Because ultimately, each day of the week is contributing something to the overall sum, isn't it? And that contribution is determined by the difference between, like Sunday was 11 minus 21, that was 10. 21 minus, or 27 minus 20 is only like a difference of 6. That's a difference of 2. This is a difference of what? 4. Almost no difference here. Difference of 8. This one had a big difference, didn't it? This was 8. That one's eight, and that one's eight. Eleven. Sunday was the biggest contributor, though, wasn't it? Because it's, the, it's almost ten. This question doesn't ask me to do the whole test, but we'll do that on another one here in a minute. Okay. So then, now we're back to the same old thing we just did. How do we make a conclusion? We connect p-value to alpha. All right, nothing new here. So I would say, since 0 0.034 is less than 0 0.05, what do we do? We reject the null. We have convincing evidence that babies or births, not babies, births are not equally likely. across the days of the week.
So far, so good? All right. Let's try the next one. 